information. If we zoom out a little bit here, you can see on the histogram here the output histogram. Remember we had that discussion last week, I think it was last week, that that top histogram is essentially what we call the output histogram. That is showing us what is being sent out to the final image, whereas what we're looking at in the curves is an input histogram. This is what's being fed into curves. So as I make changes to the curve, the histogram that we see in the curves dialog isn't going to change. But the, because what's coming into it isn't changing, but what's being sent out, we're seeing on the top histogram, and that is what's changing. So back to this, if we look back to here again, if I reset this, let me drag that point back out again, there's that gap. So we have the same gap here and here. We haven't done anything to curves, so the input is the same as the output. But now as soon as I grab this line and I start to move it, if I go too far, you can see that I'm very quickly clipping things off, cutting data off in here. And you can see her skin's got completely clipped out on there. It's obviously not good. So let's go back into this, and we'll bring it right back to the top of that point, get the white point, the end of the white point of our histogram all the way to the end. That matches up there. It lines up to the end of that. And now I have an image that's a bit brighter. Now, it still feels a little bit flat. And if we look at the black point, the, the darker part of the histogram, we can see here again, as we looked at before, the red comes down to around there, the green to there, the blue to there. So it looks like i got a little bit of room to grow in the blue. So let's go ahead and collapse the blue in there a little bit. Bring that, or, or rather, uh, bring the black point up a little bit, get it just about to the bottom of the blue, just a tiny, tiny bit. And now we have made the actual black points on our image black. So if I do a little before and after on here, it's very subtle, but you're getting this little bit of a contrast hit on there. It's a little bit brighter in the brights, a little bit darker in the darks, and we've brought that contrast in. And all we had to do to do that was take our white points and our black points and pull them in so that we are utilizing the full strength, full uh, width of the histogram. Now remember, if, if this image doesn't have anything really bright in it, you may not want to go all the way to the top, right? If you go all the way to white and there's nothing really bright in the image or it's supposed to be a dark, moody image or there's just, there's just aren't any bright elements in the image, you're gonna end up making it look overexposed. So it's not like every photo you have to have black on one end, white on the other and have them stretched all the way out. That's absolutely not the case. But in a situation like this, the vast majority of photos that you're going to play with where you want a full range of data, you have full contrast in there, that's what you're generally shooting for. You want to have your black point and your white point, zero for the black, 255, that's, you know, see the numbers here, but 255 on the white, that's all the way to the top, and have all the data filling out in between. Okay, so I've set the black and the white point in here. All I did was move the handles on that, on that curves in so that they match. But there's so much more that we can do with this. So let's go back into this. And now, instead of moving the black point and the white point, I can click anywhere in the histogram. Zoom into this again. I can click anywhere into here, and as soon as I click and start dragging on it, it adds a point. And so I can effectively brighten the image or darken the image this way. So let me set that back to about the middle point and zoom back out of here so we can see exactly what's happening. And now, as I bring this down, you can see the whole image darkening and the whole image brightening. My white point and my black points are relatively protected. Now, if I go too far, you can see, I mean, clearly this is overdone regardless on the image, but you can also see it up here. I've pushed it so far that I've pushed the white points out of the range of the histogram, but I can easily brighten up the image a little bit more, but more likely what you're gonna wanna do is brighten part of the image, like the highlights, and darken another part of the image, like the shadows. And then you get into something that we call a standard S-curve. And that's, um, let me, oops, let me exaggerate this a little bit. Let me kind of get rid of that point. I'll show you how to clear points in a moment. Let's exaggerate it. This would be a very exaggerated S-curve. I keep grabbing, um, adding extra points, not what I wanted, there we go. This is an exaggerated S-curve, but you can see the shape of the S in there. You'll hear this term a lot, just creating an S-curve to create a nice contrast curve in there. And this is exaggerated, it's too much, our shadows are too dark, our, our brights are too bright. Or maybe that's the look you wanted, right? Maybe that is what you want. You want this really high contrast, super poppy look. Fine, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But in this case, if we're trying to just make it look a little bit nicer, then we only want to bring our shadows down a little bit, bring our highlights up a little bit, and we've added some very nice contrast in there. If I do a little before and after on that, now we're really starting to see some of that contrast come through. Now, one of the things you'll notice here, you may be noticing, is that we are losing saturation. So this is one of the limitations in the photos uh, curves. On many apps, you have two different types of curves. You have a linear curve and a is that what I was saying, right? Linear and gamma curve. No, a gamma curve and an RGB curve. I think that's right. Probably getting that wrong. Anyway, uh, one of them will protect the saturation and the other will not. In this case, we're basically losing our saturation, but we can bring that back. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. 
To see the rest of it, head to photoapps.expert slash live where you can purchase and download it or sign up as a member. Members can stream any live training video as often as they like and have access to video tips and other exclusive member bonuses. To learn more about membership, head to photoapps.expert slash member.